House Speaker Kevin McCarthy yesterday saying that progress was made on debt ceiling negotiations. However, a deal does not seem imminent at all. As lawmakers were told, they do not have to stay in Washington over the holiday weekend. They're getting ready to get out of town right now. A new Fox News poll finds that the majority of Americans believe the debt ceiling should only be raised if spending cuts are included. Arizona Congressman and Joint Economic Committee Vice Chairman David Schweikert writing a column for Real Clear Markets titled Simply Raising the Debt Ceiling Won't Solve Our Fiscal Challenge. Challenges. Joining us right now is the man himself, Congressman Schweikert is here. He's also the chairman of the House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Oversight. Congressman, good to see you. Where is this going? Good morning. Uh, still no deal going into this long holiday weekend, and we are a week away from running out of money. Yep. Well, we don't actually run out of money. Um, United States borrows 30 cents out of every dollar spent. Um, when you hear people say default, they need to go back to their financial dictionary. Default is when you do not pay the interest on your bonds. We have 70% cash flow. Doesn't mean it doesn't create quite a stressor out there to certain contracts that don't get paid. Um, but, but the reality, we're borrowing $51,000 every second. Yeah. In wow. nine years, we're up to over 90,000 a second. I believe actually if you really go and dig into like the 2011 S&P downgrade, mm. it wasn't because of the fight over the debt ceiling. It's because we provide no vision of how we were going to pay back our bonds. That's very good. That's uh, a very how we good were going to manage debt. Yeah. It's a very good point. So what are the sticking points right now? We, we thought that there was some common ground on clawing back the COVID-19 money, on permitting, permitting for both fossil fuels as well mm -hmm. as green projects, uh, and perhaps uh, caps on spending. However, the president says he wants to raise revenue. Is it because the Republicans will not raise taxes, or is it because the president doesn't want these spending caps? Where are the sticking points here? Uh, Maria, I'm actually a bit more cynical than you are. It is almost Democrat um, uh, holy book that the path to their future is raising taxes. Mm -hmm. And I think they also have a problem of how do they explain to their base that the amounts of debt spending we've engaged in the last couple of years yeah. is just extraordinary. And almost they, they sort of feel, hey, we need to demonstrate we're raising taxes even though in an environment where you're potentially heading into a retraction, yep. really horrible economics. Well, look, Fox News poll found that more Americans would blame President Biden than Republicans if a debt ceiling deal is not reached. Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman is being slammed for a tweet uh, that he sent last week. He claims the whole reason the 14th Amendment exists is to raise the debt ceiling, Congressman. <laughs> Yes, well, we may, may need to send him actually a copy of the Constitution and see if he could actually read that section. Look, if you care about the survival of your republic, yeah. understand in nine years, the debt gets so bad, you can get rid of all the defense, all the discretionary. So there's no White House, there's no EPA, there's just no government at all. And you still have to borrow hundreds of billions of dollars just to cover Medicare. Wow. Yeah. People have no idea the demographic headwind. Baby boomers were retiring. Um, and, and that's the reality when you hear Speaker McCarthy talk about it. It's actually the moral aspect of, in nine years, seniors will take a 25% cut in their Social Security check because President Biden took fixing Social Security off the table yeah. in his State of the Union address. These are huge issues. The clown show needs to begin, and I need my Democrat colleagues to buy calculators. Yeah, well, the, the clown show happened all last year. Kaylee, jump in here. Remember, the Democrats jammed in more spending, as, uh, just right on the doorstep of when the Republicans were going to take over another $1.9 trillion mm -hmm. omnibus bill. Remember that, Kaylee? Absolutely. Congressman Kaylee McGee-White with the Washington Examiner. We know there are reports that Kevin McCarthy is encouraging you and your colleagues to hold the line on these negotiations. Can you speak more to what the feelings are among House Republicans and whether you would be willing to make certain concessions or whether you were going to, you've passed this bill and that's what you would like Biden to sign? It's a fair question. I, I will tell you, from my view of the world, it's all about the math. Do you flatten the spending curve? Um, even then, uh, think of the, the faux rage the Democrats have given for requesting, you know, something like four trillion over 10 years of flattening in an environment where we're scheduled to borrow over $21 trillion. Wow. Um, I, I think there's just this lack of understanding of the scale of trouble we're in. Yeah. And if you want future prosperity, if you care about the poor and their ability to have economic growth, 
Um, this is just the first step. Yeah, well, this is very disturbing uh, what you're saying. I want to switch gears and ask you about oversight of, of the corruption that's mm -hmm. in plain sight. An IRS whistleblower who was removed from the Hunter Biden tax probe is scheduled to testify before the House Ways and Means Committee tomorrow. It's a closed door meeting. Congressman, can you tell us more about what you're looking for there? Um, this is one of those moments I really can't tell you a whole lot. Um, you, you know it's coming, but there's actually because there may be um, tax data given, we're under actually very strict rules until we get the data, we know it's, we've vetted it, and then we actually actually have to go through a whole process with the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee on what we're allowed to make public. Because we're trying to actually bring back the you know, uh, rules of law that we protect IRS data. And so now we're going to get meet with the whistleblower and start to learn what we can vet and, and then the scale of what problems there are. Well, is the White House intimidating these whistleblowers? Um, we're about to find out. All right, Congressman. Thanks very much for being here this morning. David Schweikert in Washington. Me. Thanks, sir.